and is scheduled to be launched in the late 2030. However, when I looked for up, yeah, that could be what will happen on Starship's fifth test flight as the gigantic Super Heavy engages in an impressive catch for the first time. So, to gear up for that important milestone, the first sign of a big upgrade on the orbital launch tower appeared and immediately entered the camera lens. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. I'm pretty confident we will achieve that this year. This announcement was unveiled by SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk in an April 4 presentation of the company. It was accompanied by a simulated video of the mystical return process of the Super Heavy booster as you saw. SpaceX could attempt to land a Starship booster as soon as the vehicle's fifth flight as Elon Musk outlined plans to increase both the flight rate and the performance of the launch vehicle. The idea of a dedicated structure for catching Super Heavy was revealed four years ago. We're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with a launch tower arm using the grid fins to take the load he tweeted. By then, the Mechazilla launch tower was just a render but caught the public's attention so much. All of us have been curious about when this innovation will do its maiden task. Until now, Mechazilla has been performing very well in some of its functions such as lifting, grabbing, and stacking Starship's two stages. It is currently in preparation for the extremely major milestone in its lifetime, catching Starship. While the orbital launch tower in Cape Canaveral will launch the first humans to Mars, OLIT and Starbase will catch the first booster returning to Earth. On April 12, the camera recorded the activities in OLM and Starbase, of course, with the first sign of a large hydraulic actuator on a chopstick. In particular, after working on the chopsticks for a few days, the left arm actuator has been removed for an unknown reason. The replacement then happened as the new actuator was lifted and installed. The hydraulic actuator is used to move the chopstick arms, so for the renewal this time, many people expect that it will help the chopsticks to move faster. Another hypothesis aims to prevent bursting hoses inside the system due to overpressure. Then, the plumping was changed while the piston remained intact. It makes sense for a giant structure like Mechazilla, which is used to lift a thousand-ton object like Starship. As you know, SpaceX's Mechazilla is a hydraulic robot used for handling rocket components during the production and testing processes. A hydraulic actuator is a mechanical device that uses hydraulic pressure to convert energy into motion. A hydraulic actuator, as far as I know, might work as follows. Pump. A hydraulic pump generates the necessary pressure by forcing the hydraulic fluid through the plumping into the system. The hydraulic fluid in this context uses a specialized fluid, usually oil, to transmit force. Cylinder. The hydraulic actuator typically consists of a cylinder filled with hydraulic fluid. Inside the cylinder, there is a piston that separates the cylinder into two chambers. Control valve is used to control the flow of hydraulic fluid into or out of the chambers, thus the position of the piston can be controlled. When pressure is applied to one side of the piston, it moves, which in turn moves the connected mechanical part, like the chopstick gripper, in addition to the improvement on OLIT, the Starship itself also has to get higher reliability in the upcoming test flights. Musk said SpaceX wants to bring the Super Heavy booster back intact on the May flight, having it land on essentially a virtual tower in the Gulf of Mexico. That would allow the company to proceed with an attempt to bring the booster back to Starbase for a landing on the following flight. Musk said he was optimistic that SpaceX would be able this year to land a booster back on the tower using a pair of giant arms dubbed Mechazilla to cradle the booster. The odds of us actually being able to catch the booster with the Mechazilla arms this year, he said, is probably 80 to 90 percent. As for the Stage 2 Starship, reusing it will take longer. SpaceX will need to achieve at least two consecutive successful landings at a specific point in the ocean before attempting to bring it back to the launch site to avoid creating excessive debris. It can be said that the successful landing of Starship especially Super Heavy on Flight 4, is neatly compulsory because of too much schedule risk to the whole program. Most notably, their Starship Lunar Lander, Starship HLS, is required to be human-rated to carry crew to land on the moon in 2026 under Artemis 3. But, in advance, Starship must get ready and master some difficult technical needed for Artemis-like in-orbit refueling. For that reason, all attention now is focusing on Super Heavy's first catch in Flight 5, which is more complex than you think. You may know, the standard Starship's first stage is 71 meters tall 
and has a dry mass of 200 tons. This super large object requires a firm launch tower and its three strong mobile arms to catch and hold it in midair. Things start to become more intense at this point. For a super heavy catch, the vehicle will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. Based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk, calling it a catch is a misnomer, as the arms will mainly move in one dimension, open slash close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they are closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could shave a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. However, they will also inherently make proving their own efficacy a nightmare. By all appearances, the current recovery mechanisms on the arms and the landing hardpoints on ships and boosters mean that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from a perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized, partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship could accidentally impact the launch tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Musk also permitted that it doesn't hit the tower. Yeah, exactly. And especially not that launch ring, which is really difficult to make that launch ring is very complicated. He said, ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. Regardless, SpaceX specializes in converting things from impossible to too late. SpaceX is not shy of challenges and is pressing ahead with a myriad of achievements at breakneck speed. The speed at which SpaceX has moved from concept to reality has barely given time to other commercial players to assess the impact SpaceX will have on their business plans, let alone react to them. The good news is that we won't have to wait much longer to see these phenomena happen. If Flight 5's landing succeeds, SpaceX will much more confidently conduct its next ambition. God bless them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.